forces that control a kite are similar to the forces that create lift in an airplane or allow soaring birds to float on air. These man of war birds are designed for soaring. They can float on the air for hours without flapping their wings. They have two main features that allow them to do this. They are very light and they have huge wings. Kites are also designed to be light with big wing areas. Some kites have huge wing areas. Kites like this parasail. This kite is capable of producing enough force to lift a human being. Moving air creates the force to lift the kite. I'm going to show you how to construct a kite. It won't lift you into the air, but it flies very well and it is not difficult to build. This kite is a sled kite, a stable kite capable of flying in very light winds. The wind blowing past our kite creates lift. Lift is the force acting against the force of gravity. And the string will provide tension. Tension resists the drag created by the wind. This is the finished kite in the air. This kite is very stable and it flies best in light winds. To start construction, you need a large plastic bag, six long straws, some string, duct tape, scissors, hole punch, and a piece of cardboard. The first step is to create a cardboard shape of the kite, a template. I am making my template from some stiff card. The dimensions are important. You may want to pause the video and record the dimensions at each step, or you can find them at the projects area of our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the kite link. Start the template by cutting a large piece of card into a 25 by 45 centimeter rectangle. Make a pencil dot at the center at each end of the card. These marks are 12.5 centimeters from each corner. Make two dots on one side, 12.5 centimeters and 25 centimeters from the end. Next make one dot on the other side, 25 centimeters from the end. Using a straight edge, join these last two marks with a straight line. Make a mark in the middle of this new line, 12.5 centimeters from the edge. The last mark is on this side, 7.5 centimeters from the edge. Now use your ruler as a straight edge and carefully join the marks with straight lines like this. Cut along the lines to create this shape. Here's the process in quick time. This is the template. We will trace around this to create a kite. To build your kite, lay the plastic bag out flat with the opening toward you. Lay the template along one edge with one end of the template along the open end of the bag. Use a marker to trace around the template. If you are using permanent markers, be careful, don't get any on your clothes or the table. If you are a teacher and doing this project with a class, it is probably a good idea to cover the tables with plastic. Use scissors to cut out your kite. Be sure to cut both sides of the bag at the same time. Your kite will fold out and look like this. You can use markers or stickers to decorate it, and of course you can make it from any color or style of plastic bag. Next, you need to join the straws so they are long enough to support the full length of the kite. You will need straws that are 25 centimeters long. 
To join the straws, use your scissors to make a short cut into one straw, then squeeze the cut end and push it into another straw. You need three of these double straws. Lay them on your kite, like this. Put three pieces of tape on each straw. Keep the tape as close as possible to the end of the straws. Now we need two pieces of duct tape folded over the outer corner of the kite. The duct tape creates a strong point to tie our string to. Use a hole punch to punch holes through the duct tape. We need a piece of string, cut it 2.5 meters long. This length is important. Tie each end of the string in one of the holes. This string is called the bridle. Like the bridle used to control a horse, this bridle is used to control the kite. This next step is important. We need a loop in the middle of the bridle. To do this, pinch the two holes together and stretch the bridle out until you find the midpoint. Pinch this middle point and tie it into a loop. The kite is finished. We're ready to fly. This kite is very easy to fly. It will even fly indoors. If you have a gymnasium or a long haul, just hold your kite by the loop, keep your hand high, and start walking. If you have a large field without trees or buildings, you can tie a long string to the loop on your kite's bridle, and it will fly much higher. If you tie a long string to your kite, do not fly it anywhere near electric power lines. These lines carry dangerous high voltage electricity. Do not fly your kite if these lines are close by. If you're flying outside on a windy day, find a location away from buildings and trees. Wind behaves strangely around trees and buildings, changing direction erratically, even pushing your kite down onto the ground. If you have successfully created this sled kite, you might be interested in experimenting with different kite designs. You may have been wondering about the triangular opening in the middle of the kite. This is a vent, and by allowing excess air to escape, it improves the stability of the kite. Try building a sled kite of a different size or shape. Experiment with the shape or size of the vent. I created a maple leaf vent for this Canada Day kite. Here is an interesting experimental kite. Junior, a kite maker in Brazil, joined seven of our sled kites together to create this large kite. If you look closely, you will see the triangular vents. This kite flies well. Experimenting with kites is a good way to learn about flight and flying machines. You will find more science and technology activities at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the projects link.